Good Monday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We got lots to talk about here in today's video. We'll be talking about heavy snow across the northern plains and the upper Midwest, as well as a severe weather outbreak across the southern plains and the deep south through this week. And stick around for this video as well toward the end of the video, because we could be talking about a major snowstorm for the northeast. Who needs to break out the snowblowers as we get into this upcoming weekend? And also, potentially a very strong polar vortex plunge farther south into the United States as we get toward the end of December toward the Christmas time frame. All that and much more coming up here in this video. If you guys are new to the channel and have yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button down below. It's free to do and you get all of my exclusive daily weather forecast content here on this channel, including Canada, the United States, and the tropics. So definitely hit that subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates here on this channel. So looking here this morning, we got lots of alerts across the center of the country. We got lots of colors to work through here. We got the purples and pinks out across the Rocky Mountains. Those are winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings across those areas here from Montana all the way southward into the Four Corners region where they're gearing up for several inches of snow here across those upper elevations of the Rockies. But across the northern plains and upper Midwest here in these blue shaded colors. Those are winter storm watches and also some winter storm warnings already starting to break out across northern and northeastern South Dakota. Even some blizzard warnings across eastern portions of Wyoming into northwestern Nebraska. That's where they're expecting some blowing snow and drifting snow with some heavier snowfall rates across those areas with our next snowstorm across the northern United States this week. So looking here at the visible satellite imagery, you can definitely see that this storm system is starting to organize itself across the inner mountain west across the Rocky Mountains and this system will develop across the lee side of the Rockies as we head into later on this afternoon with a surface cyclone. A low pressure system will develop across eastern Colorado as we head into later on today and that will be the driving force behind a major snowstorm to the north and a severe weather outbreak to the south here. So let's break this down for you. You can definitely see this positively tilted trough across the western United States digging in across much of California all the way south toward the Baja of California as well getting in here toward this afternoon and what this will do is actually bring a lot of that colder air farther south across the Rockies. We see some heavier mountain snows especially in those higher elevations here through Montana, getting down through Wyoming, Idaho, getting into Utah, Colorado, and even down here into portions of western New Mexico and northeastern Arizona as well with those winter weather advisories and those winter storm warnings. Plenty cold enough especially like I said in those higher elevations for several inches here of snowfall. Looking at your temperature here this afternoon. Again, that cold air will be in place across much of the west. That will support the snowfall. But ahead of this system, we do have that warm sector that will be moving northward across Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And that will be the side of the system we'll have to watch for some severe weather with temperatures rising into the 50s, 60s, and even some 70s down here into south central Texas here. And then that, as we head into this afternoon and this evening, we'll start to see some of these colder temperatures plunging southward into the upper Midwest and the northern plains, supporting that snowfall threat here setting up across those areas as we get into the day on Tuesday with those overnight lows Monday night dropping back into the teens and upper 20s to the north. So looking here at first out west going across portions of the Rockies, you can see the snowfall breaking out, especially in those higher elevations here near Denver, getting back up there towards Cheyenne, Wyoming, getting up there toward the Salt Lake City area into Mo uh, Montana. That will continue as we head here into this afternoon and evening. You can definitely see a surface cyclone, a low pressure system does develop on the lee side of the Rockies here just to the east of Denver, a pretty formidable low at that as well. That is going to be developing a 991 millibar low pressure center just to the east of Denver. And that is going to definitely be the driving force behind the cold air to the north, supporting snowfall and the severe weather to the south, supporting a severe weather outbreak. And then again, as we head through the morning hours on Tuesday, still seeing some of that snowfall out west. And that will be adding up in a big way as well. Over the next 24 hours, we could be seeing several inches accumulate, especially in those higher elevations where we see the colder air here more dominant. We could see several inches 
inches, anywhere from 6 to 12 inches across those higher elevations from Arizona into New Mexico, back up across western Colorado. But again, even those lower elevations where it is cold enough up to the north across Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho, we definitely, you know, we definitely could be talking about a few inches of snow accumulating on those at least those grassy surfaces, if not on the pavement as well, as we go through the next 24 hours. But then we got to look on the warm side of the system here as we head into the day today. The Storm Prediction Center has upgraded to a slight risk across western Kansas, western Oklahoma, and the far northeast Texas panhandle. Even that marginal risk that gets down closer to the Red River here into northwest Texas across Wichita Falls, getting into the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex. We do have to watch the threat for tornadoes. We have a 2 to 5% shading of tornadoes, especially centered on western Kansas and northwestern Oklahoma, getting down to northwest Texas. A 15% shading for damaging winds across the central plains, and then a lower end threat for hail here, a 5% uh, chance here for hail um, from western Kansas, west central Oklahoma, and to northwest Texas going through the day today. Looking here at the system, we have a lot of this warm, moist air advecting northward out of the Gulf of Mexico through Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Kansas as well. Dew points will be rising to the 40s, 50s, and even some 60 degree dew points down here into central and north Texas. You can definitely see where that boundary will set up with very dry air behind that system as we move back here into portions of Colorado and New Mexico. So a lifting mechanism for storms to develop and explode off of later on today. And it looks like we do have a pretty formidable low level jet here in the 850 millibar layer. Definitely here around 50 to 60 knots across Kansas, Oklahoma, getting down into northwest Texas. So this will be concerning for some of those rotating supercells that will support some tornadoes. So looking here at 06Z Tuesday, this is the evening hours going in toward that midnight time frame. So this is midnight going into Wednesday, or uh, sorry, Tuesday morning, and we can see some scattered supercells developing from western Kansas down through western Oklahoma and northwest Texas. That will continue to press its way to the east, starting to develop into a squall line across portions of southeastern Kansas, getting through central Oklahoma, so places like Oklahoma City, more Oklahoma, getting down through Wichita Falls and the western, uh, the western side of the Dallas-Fort Worth, Fort Worth Metroplex here on Tuesday morning. Then that system will spread a little bit farther to the east on Tuesday, opening up that warm sector for severe weather here across much of uh, Louisiana, getting into Mississippi and southern Arkansas. But on the northern side of this system, very heavy snows uh, are going to be falling with lots of snowfall accumulations up here and some some blizzard-like conditions in some of these spots across the Dakotas, getting into uh, Minnesota here, back into Nebraska, eastern portions of Montana, and getting into Wyoming and even northern Colorado as well. And looking at your temperatures on Tuesday, rising into the 40s and 50s all the way up here into the Missouri and Illinois Valley. But again, on the back side of the system with all that snowfall, temperatures will be in the teens and 20s, supporting some of that fluffier snowfall out there on the back side of the system. But where it's warmer across portions of Louisiana, Texas, getting into Mississippi and Arkansas, temperatures will be in the 60s and 70s, supporting that threat for severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center on the Day 2 Outlook has still maintained that enhanced risk or level 3 of 5 across portions of north central Louisiana, southwestern Mississippi, and far east Texas. A marginal risk extending back into the Dallas-Fort Worth area just to the east of Oklahoma City and even up there toward the uh, Little Rock area with that marginal risk and that slight risk extending back down into the New Orleans region. We do have a significant hatched area for tornadoes, that 10% hatched area across north central Louisiana, far southwestern Mississippi, and far east Texas. That's a concern for a couple long track strong tornadoes of that EF2 to EF5 variety will be possible even surrounding that, that 2 to 5% shading of tornadoes including the Dallas-Fort Worth area, getting into East Texas and then moving down here towards portions of Jackson, Mississippi and New Orleans, Louisiana. We also have that uh, 5, 15, even that 30% shading for wind, damaging winds that could be in excess of 70 miles per hour across this area, especially centered on north central Louisiana here on Tuesday and then that hail threat that will be at 5 to 15% across much of the deep south as we head during that time frame as well. And it's all due to this system. We're going to start to see more of a negatively tilted trough take shape across this uh, across the middle of the country as we head into Tuesday afternoon. A very strong speed maximum across portions of Texas getting into Oklahoma with a mid-level jet around 90 to 100 knots. Definitely a lot of kinematics with this system. And looking at that low-level jet in the 850 millibar layer, very formidable across uh, Arkansas getting into Louisiana and East Texas anywhere from 40 to 60 knots. So that is going to be pretty impressive 
across those areas supportive of those rotating supercells yet again and a potential for one or two of those tornadoes to be strong and long tracked as well. So looking here at the composite reflectivity going into Tuesday afternoon we got that squall line of showers and storms with embedded supercells from Arkansas down through East Texas far northwestern Louisiana Tuesday afternoon that will spread its way to the east and again any of these supercells that can that can develop ahead of the main line could be responsible for those strong long track tornadoes otherwise we'll see that damage damaging wind threat and that hail threat as it presses to the east here into Tuesday evening. And then as we get into the Wednesday morning time frame, that'll all spread eastward toward the Tennessee River Valley and across the southeast, bringing a threat for severe weather on Wednesday across portions of southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, and to the northwest Florida panhandle here across Mobile, Alabama, Panama City, back across Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and getting into New Orleans, Louisiana here on your Wednesday. But looking here on the north side of the system, like I said, we got a lot of that snowfall breaking out across the Dakotas getting back into western Nebraska here and across much of the northern plains as we head through the day on Tuesday tomorrow that will spread its way to the north and east getting more of portions there of Mississippi northern Wisconsin getting back again the lingering snowfall across the Dakotas eastern Montana into eastern Wyoming as we head through the day on Wednesday and this system is going to be dropping quite a bit of snowfall you can see some very heavy snows across much of the northern plains and upper Midwest here really centered on the Dakotas back into eastern Montana Montana and eastern portions of Wyoming a closer inspection of this. Look at the the accumulations across these areas into portions of the, the Dakotas, eastern Montana, eastern portions of Wyoming, getting down to the western Nebraska. Some of these areas could be over a foot of snow, if not even over 20 inches in some spots. So definitely could be some two-foot snowfall across some par parts here of western Nebraska, southwestern portions there of South Dakota, and then getting back into those higher elevations across Montana and Wyoming here with this system. But as the system presses a little bit farther to the east. We're going to see that cold air start to wrap around here across par uh, portions of the Midwest and much of the center of the country. We got that blocking up to the north with those higher uh, higher pressures up into portions of Alaska, stretching across much of Canada, but suppressing that cold air farther to the south. And looking here on Thursday, December 15th, we got that colder air starting to retreat southward across much of the northern plains with that new snowpack and also moving into the central plains as well, where we were in the 60s and 70s and Texas will be tumbling back down into the 40s as we head into Thursday. Same thing on Friday. Some of that colder air will be stretching its way farther south across much of the middle Mississippi Valley and the southern plains with highs in the 30s and 40s across much of Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, and even some lower 50s down the immediate uh, down south into the immediate Gulf Coast on Friday, December 16th. We'll have a new low pressure system develop across the northeast here at 996 millibar low here as we get into that weekend time frame here this upcoming week weekend on Friday into Saturday. We could be talking about our next snowstorm across the Northeast as we head into that time frame here Friday morning. Lots of that heavy snowfall breaking out across upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and even western Maine as well. It does appear right now to be mainly rainfall from Boston down through New York City, northern New Jersey, and eastern portions there of Pennsylvania. Um, but again, this system could wobble west or, you know, east or west across these areas, so that will mean the difference between heavy snow and heavier rainfall. But right now, it looks like the interior parts of New England, uh, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, into Wyoming will be, or into Maine rather, will be seeing a Lots of uh, heavier snowfall, and that will continue through the day on Saturday and even into Sunday before wrapping up into Sunday afternoon. And looking here at a couple model runs of how much snowfall we could be seeing, the European High Resolution Guidance is showing well over a foot of snow and a widespread swath across northern portions of Pennsylvania, getting through upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and all the way up into Maine as well. Portions of Quebec, if you live into portions of Ontario and Quebec, Canada, especially in the southern edges of those provinces into Canada, we could be talking about over a foot of snow there as well on the European guidance. Even on the GFS, similar uh, story as well. The GFS takes that snow line just a little bit farther to the southeast toward northern New Jersey and even introduces some more aggressive amounts, maybe getting cl close to two feet of snowfall here across New York, getting into Vermont, New Hampshire, and portions of Maine. So we may be breaking out the snowblowers, guys, as we get into this upcoming weekend across much of the northeast. I know we've been looking for snowfall, and it does look like our first big snow system here of the year looks to occur across those areas going into this upcoming weekend. 
But beyond these systems here that we're that we just broke down, we have a true Arctic air mass, a true polar vortex type air mass starting to work into the northern United States with that Arctic front that'll be dropping south and east here across the Midwest and northern plains going into early next week on Monday, December 19th. And that is going to be opening the floodgates for some very cold temperatures here, the coldest temperatures of the season thus far as we get closer to that Christmas time frame here from December 19th through Christmas Day will likely likely be, if not expected to be, below normal across much of the lower 48, really centered on the Midwest and the mid-Mississippi Valley there. And looking at this here, look at all the purples here starting to retreat southward from Canada into the United States across the Dakotas, Montana, Wyoming, and much of the Central Plains getting into that Monday time frame on December 19th. That will continue into Tuesday, December 20th, with all that cold air starting to drop south towards the uh, Red River here into Texas and across the Deep South as well, that freezing line will be dropping down through Tennessee, through portions there of Alabama, Mississippi, and northern Louisiana, even into North Texas as well during early the following week. And then we'll be looking at some very cold temperatures for much of the lower 48 as we get toward the middle of next week here on Wednesday, December 21st. So definitely looking at a very, very cold start to winter here as we move into the first full day of winter on Wednesday, December 21st. So looking here on Monday, uh, Monday, December 19th for the afternoon highs. Yes, these are afternoon high temperatures across the area here. We got the warmer temperatures to the south, but that true Arctic front will start to move through much of the Midwest and behind that high temperature temperatures below zero across much of the northern plains and the northern Rockies. Even up here into Canada, we'll see high temperatures averaging around negative 10 to negative 20 degrees. Looking at the wind chills out there, we're going to see some brutal wind chills across the Dakotas getting into southern Canada there. Minus 20, minus 30, even minus 40 degree wind chills Fahrenheit as we go into Monday afternoon. These are afternoon wind chills. And then going into the day on Tuesday, these are your temperatures going into Tuesday, December 20th. Again, below zero high temperatures across much of the northern plains. We got teens for highs across Kansas, Missouri, getting into the Illinois Valley there. And then going into the day on Wednesday, those temperatures get even worse. These are high temperatures, guys. Minus 15 to minus 20 across the Dakotas and then farther north into Canada. We got single digit highs here on either side of zero across portions of Iowa, getting into northern Illinois there and into Nebraska. And even that freezing line, check out that freezing line going all the way south here into central Texas and the deep south. All all the way down closer to that Florida panhandle as we get into that Wednesday time frame on December 21st to start the first day of winter. And these wind chills will definitely feel like winter as well with the wind chills dropping to minus 30, minus 40. And I wouldn't even rule out minus 45 degree wind chills as we head toward the middle of next week to start the first day of winter. And looking here at this time frame from December 19th through Christmas Day itself, if we do have a lot of uh, precipitation starting to fall across the northern plains, which some of the guidance is starting to hint at with some type of you know clipper system or some type of weak storm system it will not take a lot of uh, moisture in the environment to produce a lot of snowfall across these areas here just due to the fact that we have such a lot of cold air moving south here just a little bit of moisture a tenth of an inch of moisture will you know be the difference between no snow and possibly just six inches of snow so definitely could be talking about that as we get toward the middle and end here of December well thank you guys so much for watching I know that was a lot to to get to. I did want to break that down for you. Definitely, if you guys like this video, press the thumbs up button down below. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel down below to get all my exclusive daily, uh, daily forecast updates here on this channel, and hit that notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates as well on this channel. So thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your Monday, and I'll see you all in the next video.